Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just going to uh, have a little bit more of a chat about the EJAR cooler and the P0400. Um, what I would like to explain is, when I explain a problem or tell you about something, it doesn't mean it's a big problem. I'm just telling you about the things we see that come up. When you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of these cars or millions or whatever the case may be, you're going to get the odd thing that comes up, particularly with this dumb idea, you know, exhaust gas recirculation on a diesel, dumb idea. I'll say it again, just in case anyone, any engineers or anyone, I understand you've got to do things, but there's other ways to do things. EGR, exhaust gas recirculation on a diesel, dumb idea. Now, this is, you can call it, an, we call it the EGR cooler. It's a heat transfer unit. It's a, I don't know what the proper term is. What is it called here? It's made by T-Rad in Japan and it doesn't actually tell you a name of it but we're just going to explain a little bit about what it does just quickly. That's not the important part. The important part is I'm probably going to title this one P0400. Now this is a, <clears throat> in other videos I always recommend that you should have something in your vehicle to read DTCs. DTCs is Diagnostic Trouble Codes. That's when your engine light on your dash comes up and you go, what do I do now? And a book says, take it to Toyota or whatever. Um, that's not always necessarily the best thing you do can do. And sometimes it can actually be the worst thing you can do. The simple thing you need to do is get that number, the DTC, and you need to Google it or put it into our groups on Facebook or our YouTube channel and come up with this awesome information. So let's get on with it. EGR Cooler. So the idea of it is, we did some videos in the last couple of days explaining about the exhaust port in the head. This is the unit that bolts on the side of the head here, okay? And, well, it doesn't, but we'll say it extracts, it doesn't, exhaust gases through up here and inside here. There's, there's two, dual purpose, actually. One is to cool those stupidly hot exhaust gases down because they can be really hot. Um, but not usually when they're traveling through here. We've explained that in the previous video But the other thing it does also which is why it's probably maybe a good reason not to switch it off or completely block it is um, The other good the other thing it does is it allows the boost pressure to Backwards through the system now. I'll just show you what I mean, right? So there's two ports here I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. This was Luke, this is your EJR cooler if you happen to watch this video. Oh, I have just cleaned it. Have a look at that. Beautiful. No, I didn't need a new one. As per what the workshop said, we wanted to give it a new one. 900 bucks, whatever they are. No, it just needs cleaning. The only time they need a new one. Oh, so there's going to be lots of information. All these videos have got lots of little bits, so you've got to stick with them till the end. If you get bored after three, four or six minutes, get to the point and you stop watching, you lose, you miss out, you're the person that's still asking questions. So this is where the coolant flows inside here and that's what cools it down. Now understand the coolant's still 85 degrees, let's say ballpark, so it's not going to cool it down from say 300 to much, somewhere between 85 and 300, you figure it out. Now the really important thing is that you never ever forget to put this mounting bolt back in if you take it out and to remember to tighten it up because if you don't, the whole weight of this unit's quite heavy. There's a lot of um, steel in there if you like, stainless steel. What will happen, the weight of that will vibrate around, it's a diesel engine. This is bolted to the head. This is up here somewhere is bolted to the EGR and this whole weight is just diesel vibration instead of being bolted to the manifold. And what happens, these crack around here. We've seen vehicles come in, cracked and cars with muffler putty and everything around here. It doesn't work. You need to get an expert welder to weld it up, all on the right angle and everything, or you need to get a new one or you need to go to the wreckers. So that's what you need to do now. The key points in this video is, this P0400 video, is we do try and go through all the different things that cause a P0400. And it's not, you just got to watch, I say don't use Google, use my channel. Search my channel, search our groups and pages because that's where you're going to get the accurate information. And even if someone's put it up, someone else, they've probably learnt it from someone that knows because they've experienced it hundreds of times. So that's what they've learnt. So if they've answered a question and it's allowed to stay there, it's because it's fairly right. If the information's wrong, okay, we're talking about facts, facts, 
facts, F A C T S, facts, facts here. We want facts. We don't want garbage or you know someone's opinion, whatever. If it's a fact, right, and it's stated there, that's good. If it's actually um, an opinion, that can stay there too. But if it's wrong, we can't leave it there. It's wrong. We don't want someone to come along and read that. We don't have what's it called misinformation or what's it called false news you know the false news on Facebook there's no false news okay if it's not right we'll take it away if it's an opinion it's an opinion everyone's entitled to their opinion they're like belly buttons everyone's got one right they're like Prados everybody's got one anyway so this is the deal if you've got a P0400 it's probably not because this is blocked but this is worst case scenario and what I want to show you eventually but we're going to quickly go through some of the main causes now if you've got a P0400 mysteriously appear, the first thing you've got to look at is who worked on the car last. Did you or someone just do some work on the vehicle? Because it's probably related. We've talked about it before. Check all the vacuum ons. Make sure they're on the right way. Doesn't have to be vacuum ons on the EJAR cooler or the EJAR valve. Any of the vacuum ons. The yellow, the pink, the green, the white. There's all different vacuum ons. They've all got to be in the right place. These are the general causes mostly. Um, or the next probably most obvious would be if someone goes ahead and puts a plate in you know that flow reduction plate here that brings this whole size down to seven mil to reduce the flow a little bit we'll say it reduce the flow a little bit that's what we'll say still works but reduces the flow a little bit as i usually say i'm not telling you whether it's legal or not everyone's country and state's different that's for you to figure out i'll just tell you what works it does work really well to keep everything nice and clean so it's up to you if you do that if you go ahead and put that plate in and you haven't cleaned everything, then it could cause a P0400, which is a low EGR flow, okay? Now, it's not the plate that did it. It's the problem with the EGR system that was already there. It was on the edge. And then putting that plate there's pushed it over the edge. If you didn't put the plate there and you let it all cake up, it could just come to that point all on its own. It may or may not, you know what I mean? It's very rare, okay? But by adding something and not cleaning your problem, causing your own problem so your things need to be clean now you don't normally need to pull this off and clean the whole thing out it's very rare that you would need to do that and I'm not saying you do need to do that this is probably a one in a thousand or less but some of the other causes of the P0400 are okay so it's low flow it could be a blocked air filter or a dirty MAF sensor because the more blocked that is or the incorrect readings that gets it's going to tell the ECU something's happening that's not happening well if it can't get air from the air filter and it can't get air through here for whatever reason then it's not going to be happy so there's a problem so things like that can be contributors you got to make sure all your sensors and filters and sort of things are reasonably clean okay what else p0400 okay the other main one we showed you in another video and i haven't got that component right here right now but that means you just need to go and watch the other videos other information other posts i've mentioned it many times over the years there's an actuator on the side and it needs to be able to move freely. It's got a vacuum on connected to it, so you can disconnect that if you like. And you just push that arm up and down and notice its travel. Off the top of my head, I reckon it only moves about, I don't know, 30 or 40 degrees. From memory, it's towards the top, maybe 11 o'clock, because I seem to just push it down with my thumb. It probably goes down to about 9 o'clock. I'm not looking at a car, I'm just going by memory. I could have it completely wrong. The point is, that it's smooth operation up and down and it goes all the way to each end without jamming. They can they can be seized, they can be tight, they can be jamming, it, it can be smooth, but just jamming at one end or the other. So if that's the case, then even on the vehicle, and this will be sitting on the vehicle in a position like that, even on the vehicle, it's possible to take out these three bolts at the back here, which go in these holes, one, two, three, right? And it, and it takes the rest of the unit that's here that goes up to the EJAR valve off. Right, you can unbolt that. You can buy gaskets for there as well. We don't supply those because this is not something that normally needs to be done, okay? This is if you've got an EGR problem, okay? And you've checked all the other basics step by step, which you'll learn by watching all the videos to the end, okay? Once you go through all these stages and you can actually take those bolts out, take the tailpiece off, you can clean up those flaps and everything while it's on there. Generally in here is all dry. It's just dry powder and it's not going to cake up. It's not going to build up in here. Maybe a little bit towards the end because with the turbo pressure coming backwards to go backwards through this hole, um, you can get a little bit of oil just up this end, but not normally down there. Now this one, 
needed to be cleaned out because this is off a vehicle that's had a cracked piston, okay? And what happens when you get a cracked piston? You get a lot of oil in your intake, in your turbo, basically in everything, in your exhaust. There's a bit of, a bit of oil going everywhere. So this did get oil inside it. And of course, once you've got oil and exhaust gases, I'm gonna try and show you in there. I'm not gonna shine a light. I reckon you can see enough. You can see the system in there, similar to a radiator. Those little fins, just like radiator fins really, they will block up with soot and oil and whatever in there. And the flow is not too great, right? Because there's been oil in there, right? So that certainly did need a good clean out. And that's what we've just spent the last little while doing. Um, fun job, very messy and all that. Not the sort of thing I'd like to do, really. But anyway, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's all bada bing beautiful right now, okay? So if you have a P0400 and you've been through all the basics, the vacuum lines, you've checked those flaps are all working right, you've cleaned your EGR valve and your intake, you know, you've cleaned the whole lot, you know it's Mickey Mouse, you've done the injector job, you've had the manifold off, just do it all at the same time, you've renewed the vehicle, you've put it back like new again, and you're still getting a P0400, it could vary what it is, depend it could be every 20 Ks, it could be every once a week or every once a month. That's why I say it's good to have a scan tool of some sort, because it's very rare, then you just clear it, don't waste any time on it. I wouldn't waste any time pulling this off to clean it, if this happens every now and then. If you're getting it every 20 Ks and it's fully annoying, then you don't want to be clearing it every, every 20 Ks, that can be like every 10, every 12 minutes on the highway. So you don't want to be doing that, you want to have a clear dash, you don't want it lit up like a Christmas tree, you want to be able to know if there's actually a real fault with something else, so it does need to be clear. Um, if you've gone through everything else, then this could be the next thing. There could be a chance, particularly at this end of the EJ cooler, that this unit becomes blocked. So what you could normally do to clean these, if you do get them off, if you blow, if it's dry, you blow compressed air through here, basically plumes of exhaust soot are just gonna blow straight out that end, the other end of it or whichever way you wanna blow it, right? Um, generally, and it's gonna be fairly clear. If you wanna get it shiny clean like the outside here, you can use your products and your degreaser and we've mentioned which products we use in other videos. So you already know that. In case you're new, then as I say in other videos, you need to go back and have a look at those because all that information's still relevant. If something's not really relevant anymore, you know, some things get superseded and outdated, but if there's anything that's completely off, we're just gonna take it down. So if it's still there, it's worth watching, okay? I don't know what else I can tell you. Do not forget this bolt, which I've said that in other videos. So, you know, how does this mount? As I said, it's like this. You've got these coolant hoses here. Can you see a problem? See this pipe here in the hose? It hides this bolt hole, so you don't actually get to see it. If it's on an angle like that, you'll see it. But if you've got a hose and a hose clamp, you might not. You need to be down under here to see it, right? So whatever you do when you're working on the vehicle, anything to do with EJR injectors, whatever, if you take this bolt out, this is your $900 video. Well, it's not real. It's only worth $450 because I think I've said this before, at least in one other video, that would make this video worth $450 to you. I'm telling you, if you forget that, if you forget that bolt, this is going to crack, right? I've heard about it, had the phone calls, you know, and people have forgotten it, right? So this is why we're doing it again with all this added information. Why am I still talking? Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you. What did I, what have I missed, okay, P0400? When people go in to do their service and change their oil filter, be very careful of those vacuum lines. Those vacuum lines right there, they're the ones. There's a VSV there that's worth 200 bucks. Of, I haven't quoted it myself. People have told me. They've rang up, they've got their problem. Okay, I say, what have you done lately? Oh, you know, no, no, I just, changed, just did a service, I just changed oil. Okay, hang on. Did you change your oil filter? Oh, yeah. Okay, right. And to be honest, I had one today. Who was it today? Uh, what's his name? Guess what? His name's Anthony. What a dude. So I spoke to Anthony today. He's getting a P0400. So there's two EJR cooler P0400 related things in a day. That's why I think, you know what? It's time to do a video and give you some information on this. So Anthony has a P0400 coming up. By the year in the kilometers of the vehicle, it didn't make sense. I said to him, what have you done? He said, you know, I did a service. I said, did you break? He had a quick look and he said, no, that looks okay. So then we went through all this sort of information and then, but I said, but none of it really makes sense. And that's why I say, I like to make recommendations, 
recommendations based on averages, right? That's why diagnostics, as I've said, you can't rely on it, you know? It's gonna tell you things are okay when it's not, and it might even tell you things are not when it's okay. So just be careful with that. And those feed actually is one, two, three, four, and that's all we seem to be worried about. Just be careful with those. Re replace those seats and the um, injectors based on averages. Like I said, the average, seven years, 170, whichever comes first. It varies. If you want an indication on your vehicle specifically, shoot me a text message and I'll give you an indication or maybe even a call when I would be planning to replace them. So, Anthony did a service. By the end of the conversation, about 10 minutes later, he did find that EGR vacuum line near the oil filter. It was kinked and jammed up behind a clamp or something somewhere. I have asked him to do a post and share it with everybody on our, one of our Facebook groups, whatever. I'm not sure which one. We've got a few. Whichever one he thinks is most relevant, maybe all of them. And this is why if you're on YouTube, it's good, but you're not going to get people like that, their feedback. And I ask people to provide all their feedback because I'm just me. And it's good to... We do a lot of remote diagnostics. You know what I mean? We, a lot of, we diagnose a lot of vehicles over the phone these days. More of a kind of tech hotline, I suppose. And not everybody can have a go, I suppose. You know, I'll give you a lot of information like this for free. You support me, then you can have a go back, right? So, basically, you want to be on those groups. As I said, doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you've got a 1KD, you should probably be in hashtag 1KD forever cruise the group, right? Hashtag number one, KDF in capital letters, O-R-V-E-R, capital C, crew, 1KD forever crew. Or you could get in that, uh, the injectors and engine group. I've showed you on that. Let's get that piece of paper again. Where is it? Um... Where are these groups? There you go. Um, Toyota 1KD FE, injectors and engine, and hashtag 1KD forever crew. You want to be in those groups, so then when people that I've had discussions with provide the feedback, the photos, this is the problem I found. When you have that problem, you already know about it because you've already done your research. You've stayed up to date with your vehicle and what can happen, especially if you're servicing it yourself, something you might not be aware of. <laughs> I've had other people that have had that little broken that plastic tang off the VSV is not good Okay, so we think we've solved his problem. He's going to provide some feedback later. Beautiful Might even not be today. I don't know right so you've got time to join the groups It'll pop up do some searching go through some old posts have a look around This one as I said, I just wanted to show you you can take the butt end off this clean it out if you've had oil in there or if it's an old vehicle or some of these particular circumstances, maybe if you've got a big exhaust or bigger turbo or something modified sort of systems, that might be where you get more oil into here. And the older cars, they may just cake up a little bit over time. If you've gone through everything, you may need to clean this. That's the point. Plus all that other information. I hope that's been helpful as always. I hope, you know, Bada bing, bada boom, that's it for today. Have a nice evening. Thanks for your support. Subscribe, thumbs up. Bada bing, bada boom. See ya. Thanks, guys.